How's it going everybody? Today I tested a bunch of thermal paste, so let's see how it performed. This video is brought to you by my personal pocketbook, so if you'd like to help me out, like, subscribe, and check out my Patreon page so I can make more videos like this one. So I spent the day testing a bunch of thermal compounds. They include Corsair TM30, Arctic Silver 5, Thermorite TFX, Arctic MX4, Noctua NTH2, Thermal Grizzly Cryonaut, and a mystery paste. I tested this in a room, kept the temperature at 21 degrees Celsius. I used my own rig. It has an AMD 3700X on an Aorus X570 motherboard. The cooler I used is my Kraken X53. It has a 240 millimeter rad, two 120 millimeter stock fans set to 100%. I took off the front, top, and side panels for maximum airflow, and I ran A to 64 stability test for 20 minutes with the CPU, FPU, and cache boxes ticked. I repeated the test three times, making sure the AIO liquid was at the same temperature before starting each test. And after testing, I took the average of the averages, which were taken from HW Info's CPU CCD1 TDI reading. Once I was finished each set of testing, I made sure that the spread was good and only on one occasion did I have to repeat it because of bad coverage. And that was just my fault. I didn't put enough paste on it. And the one thing I kept forgetting to do was plug in the pump cables. I think it was almost every time I turned on the PC and I'd forgotten to plug them back in. But luckily I realized very quickly that that was the case and was able to fix the problem. But enough talking, let's look at the results. So not surprisingly, top of the list is the Cryonaut from Thermal Grizzly at 66.8 degrees Celsius, only 0.6 degrees above the Noctua NTH2. I was actually quite surprised by this because a lot of other testing I've seen actually had the Cryonaut pretty far ahead of many of the competitors. Next up was, this was a surprise to me, this is Thermal Right. I had never heard of this company before. And the TFX landed at 68 degrees. Just after that is a tie between the Corsair TM30 and the Arctic MX4 at 69.4 degrees, after which is the trusty Arctic Silver 5 at 70.1. And in last place, this is a bit of a disappointment, I was kind of rooting for this to be some kind of magic paste, didn't turn out to be true. In last place, 71.5 degrees. So with that, I'm gonna let you make your own decisions about how to feel about these temperature readings. Of course, I told you my methodology. I definitely recommend you go check out what other people have tested as well because they're gonna be different. But next, I'd like to talk about price per gram. And I'm gonna go from lowest to highest. So the lowest is the Arctic Silver 5. Below that is Arctic MX4 at 249 per gram. Then Corsair TM30 at 266 per gram. After that, Noctua NTH2 at 430 per gram. Then a bump up from there, the Thermalrite TFX at $6.66 per gram. And by far the most expensive thermal paste is the Thermal Grizzly Cryonaut at $9.27 per gram. By the way, all these prices are from Amazon that I looked at today. So they can change from website to website depending on where you look. You might find them more expensive or you might find them cheaper, but I, for consistency, I just went from Amazon to see what prices they had. So combining what we have here on this graph compared to what we had for the performance graph, I just have to mention that the spread of temperature only from 66.8, we're just gonna take that mystery paste out of here because obviously I don't even know where it came from. I had that in the bin somewhere many years ago. I'm sure it came with some kind of cooler that I had at some point, I have no idea. Uh, but as far as I know, you can't find that. So. Like I said, from, from 66.8 degrees from the cryonaut all the way down to the Arctic Silver 5 at 70.1, that is a spread of less than four degrees Celsius. In my opinion, that's nothing. That's, that's almost nothing. That is negligible. And when you're gaming, you're not gonna be hitting these temperatures. The last pace that I tested was the Noctua NTH2, and that's still in my system now. So I went ahead and played some games for a while. I was playing Deep Rock Galactic for about half an hour, and the max temperature, the max, never bumped over 55 degrees, and the average was at 44 degrees Celsius. So that means the spread between these thermal pastes is gonna be even smaller. And when you're gaming, you are not gonna see a difference whatsoever. So what I can say here, just first and foremost, is don't worry about it. Just go ahead, whatever thermal paste you can find, if it's from a reputable brand, just buy whatever they have. Pretty much just buy the cheapest. That being said, I did find out that you can buy a different tube of Cryonaut, which is 5.55 grams, which is a really strange 
amount. But anyways, I believe it was like $19 or something like that. $19.49 for 5.55 grams, which brings it down to three and a half dollars per gram, which is a huge difference. So what that does to me is that thermal right TFX that knocks that out of the, out of here. Like there's no reason for you to buy that thermal right TFX. I just found it really strange. That was a one one of these one of these pastes that I, I found kind of peculiar. It was really thick on the back. It has the instructions on how to apply it. It wants you to put it on the CPU cooler, not the CPU itself. And to be honest, it was very viscous. I had to make a reapplication because when I first tested it, I put a regular amount on and it didn't spread far enough. It was almost like, not quite like Play-Doh, but kind of. And when I tried to use the spreader that it came with, it really didn't work very well. It, it kind of just peeled back and wouldn't actually stick to the surface like you would from other ones. Like uh, the Cryonaut was probably the least viscous of all of them. And when I took it off the CPU cooler, the spread was perfect pretty much it co covered the entire cpu and maybe i put a, a bit too much on but it wasn't a huge amount so it was fine but this one yes the thermal thermal right tfx um i wouldn't recommend buying it's just more expensive and for that same price you can get more cryonaut for less money so that one's kind of out of the picture in my opinion but as for the other ones excellent corsair T tm30 excellent paste Arctic MX4, excellent paste. Arctic Silver 5, this is a trusty one. And this tube I have here, it's still a bit slippery from <laughs> the gag I did uh, a while ago, which I was surprised by, kind of gross. But um, this is the, I have another tube of this, which is a much older tube that I bought many years ago. Uh, I presume works just as well. This stuff is trusty. However, considering it's performed the least out of these, again, not really a deal breaker at all but the fact that it is conductive i believe out of this list it's the only conductive paste if you were to get this on your motherboard it could cause, it could cause issues and that's something you don't want if you want the cheapest sure you can buy this but i would just go ahead and pay the extra dollar or two dollars for whatever it is that you can find like the mx4 from arctic i think that's a really good paste um, but all in all if i were to buy any one of these i would buy the Noctua NTH2. It's a bit more expensive. I believe it was $12. Yes, $12.90 on Amazon for three and a half grams, which by the way, three and a half grams is plenty. If you're pitting that against the Thermal Grizzly one, one gram, this will probably do you like, I don't know, three applications, maybe four, not a lot. So uh, if you plan to change your CPU cooler or do any kind of tinkering on your, your machine, you probably want more than that. And you don't want to have to buy two or three of these. You end up spending way too much money on thermal paste. But uh, the Noctua, I think, is a great deal because it comes in this pretty big box. And that's not to say that's any bonus or anything. Maybe it's a waste of cardboard, but it comes with these cleaning wipes. It comes with three of them. So if you're someone who doesn't want to have to go out and buy a big bottle of isopropyl alcohol uh, to clean your CPU, it's kind of a nice value add, I think, to that. And it comes with three and a half grams, which is plenty for any regular user. Unless you're a power user, you're not going to go through that much. So for me, if it were to be any of these and you had to choose one, I would buy Noctua. But that being said, like I said previously, it doesn't really matter if you're gaming, unless you're doing some serious overclocking, you want every last bit out of your CPU, then you want the best. Cryonaut is probably gonna be the best, but at that point, you're probably gonna be delitting and using liquid metal and all sorts of things. So, I don't know, it's up to you. Take a look at other people's videos. Don't just watch this one. See what their performance readings were. Uh, I spent many hours doing this over the day and I trust them. But again, for the third time, check what other people have done. So this video took a lot of work. I had been planning this for quite a while. I hope it's been useful to you. And I actually, this was the first video that kind of inspired me to start this channel. I was just curious to try it for myself. I love watching videos of people doing tests and I wanted to do some tests for myself. And I bought a few of these probably about a month ago, planning to do this video, but things kept coming up one after another, and it just got kept getting pushed back. I ended up putting it into one of my uh, do it later folders, the back burner folder, but I decided since I passed a thousand subscribers, I would finally go ahead and put in the effort to do this video. So I hope it was helpful for you. Um, this did cost me money, and to talk about money and ads, it's a, a weird subject to kind of get on, but anyways, I don't like ads. Uh, one of my YouTube accounts, this one, Tech Illiterate, I, I don't have premium like I do on my personal account. 
So I get all the ads. So when I'm on my phone and I go ahead and watch a video, there's the Google ads to start. There's some YouTuber will put some ad basically for some other video that they did. Then they have an integrated ad for some product like a VPN or something. Then halfway through the video, there's more ads from Google and so on. And it's just, I end up turning off the video and I find that really annoying. So I don't want to do that. We'll see how things go. I can't make any promises. I'd like to make this YouTube channel a viable business, something I can do every day, uh, make some money on that I can reinvest into the channel so I can do more interesting tests like this and much, much more expensive ones that I'd, I'd like to do in the future. But baby steps, baby steps. Anyways, the point of this is I just opened a Patreon. It has different levels. Currently, there are no particular rewards, but just thanking you for supporting this channel and wanting to propel it further. So if you could help me out, I'd be really thankful. But even if you don't and you want to be a freeloader, that's totally cool too. That's fine because guess what? I freeload a lot of things as well. And at the end of the day, all I can say is thank you so much for watching my videos and thank you to everybody who subscribed. I can't believe I've reached a thousand subscribers so quickly. It's been really fantastic and really motivating to see all the great comments that people leave. So with that, I'll send you off. This has been Tech Illiterate. My name is Nick. Thank you for watching. <laughs>